about sampling variability as well as sample distribution. Um, you ought to know the difference between the distribution of a sample, the distribution of a population, and the sampling distribution of a statistic, which all sound really similar, but the differences are important. Okay. Um, so how can X bar, based on a sample of only a few thousand of the 121 million American households, be an accurate estimate of mu? All right, so how can our sample be an accurate estimate of the actual population information we're trying to find? Um, after all, a second random sample taken at the same time would choose different households and likely produce a different value of X bar. So if we take a sample, right, and we take another sample, our mean may not be the same, right? If I take 500 households and do some data with that, and then a different 500 household, our means will not be exactly the same from our samples, okay? Um, so this basic fact is called sampling variability. So write that down. The value of a statistic varies in repeated sampling. All right, so I'd write down that definition. Makes sense, okay. If you're taking different people or different samples, so you might get a different value for the mean, or again, we're not always finding the mean. We talked about finding the minimum yesterday. All right, so to make sense of sampling variability, we ask what would happen if we took many samples, right? So maybe our sample size is this classroom, like 20 kids, right? And we're gonna take a bunch of samples of 20 kids. Okay? So we're gonna take a large number of samples from the population. We're gonna calculate the statistic, so possibly the mean or the proportion of some people who think this versus this, okay? and we would make a graph. And after we make a graph of many, many samples, okay, then we would go back to what we learned in chapter two, which was stock, okay? So we're coming back to that, the shape, the outliers, the center, and the spread. And we would talk about that, okay? So any unusual features. Okay, so um, reaching for chips. Uh, we're just gonna read through this activity. Uh, before class, your teacher will prepare a population of 200 colored chips, with 100 having the same color, we'll say red. Um, the parameter is the actual proportion P of red chips in the population. P is equal to 0.5, so half the chips in the bag are red. Okay, we're gonna say the other half are blue. In this activity, you will investigate sampling variability by taking repeated random samples of size 20 from the bag. So you have a bag with 200 chips, half red, half blue, passing it around, every single person draws out 20 chips and counts how many are red, okay? So 10 out of 20, maybe 11 out of 20, maybe five out of 20, maybe 15 out of 20, right? Everybody's gonna get a different number and you put them back in so everybody's doing the same proportion when they take their 20 chips out. Make sense? You guys didn't like the card activity where I made you do it a million times, so we're just reading through this one, is that okay? All right. Um, so after your teacher has mixed the chips thoroughly, each student in the class should take a sample of 20 chips and note the sample proportion. Notice we're talking P hat, right? So P is the true parameter, which is what in the bag? What would P be? 0.5, right? 100 out of 200 are red. We're talking about number of red chips, okay? So when you take out your P hat, you might get 11 out of 20, or you might get 7 out of 20, right? Uh, you might get 10 out of 20. Um, so when finished, the students should return all the chips to the bag, stir them up, and pass it to the next student. Um, each student should record the p-value in a chart on the board and plot the value um, in a class dot plot, label the graph from point 0.1 to point 0.9. Um, describe what you see, shape, center, spread, outliers. Lucky for us, someone else did this activity. So there's all the dots, okay? So they passed around the bag. And so let's talk about what one point means. What does this one point right here mean? This point seven. What do you think, Cece? 
Okay, it's the max that we got, right? But it's maximum what? 0.7 is what? What does it represent, you guys? Yeah. Yes. Somebody got 14 out of 20 red chips. That's what that means, right? And then they just made it a decimal, and we plotted it on a dot plot and got 0.7. So somebody over here got 0.2, meaning they got 4 out of 20 red chips, right? So how many different of these did we take? Uh, we have 35 students in this class, so there's 35 dots. And every single one of these is a p hat, right? Every single one's a p hat. All right. So the graph, we're going to go through uh, the shape, roughly symmetric, single peak at 0.5, right? Um, the center, the mean of this happens to be 0.499, really close to the true mean of the bag, which is that half the chips are red, right? So this is the balancing point of the distribution when you do the mean. Um, the spread is the standard deviation. How did they get this number? So there, you guys are going to learn this eventually, but I want to show you the formula anyways, um, and I would write this down. So the standard deviation of p hat, of all the little p hats, is equal to uh, so it's going to be p Hold on, yes, P, okay, times 1 minus P divided by N. So P would be our mean proportion that we got, so 0.499. 1 minus P is 1 minus 0.499, so 0 0.501, divided by N which is the number that we took in the sample. Each sample was 20 red chips, and they're square rooting it, and that's how they got 0.112. Okay, so that's the spread. And then the outliers, there's no obvious outliers in this one. You might say this could be an outlier, okay? All right, now, of course, the class only took 36, I thought it was 35, but anyways, different simple random samples of 26, or of 20 chips. Um, how many possible simple random samples of size 20 are there in the bag of 200? All right, there's a whole bunch, right? How many different ways can I choose 20 chips from 200? That's 1.6 times 10 to the 27th, actually, right? You don't have to figure that out. But it's, it's just known in this little activity. Uh, if we took every one of those possible samples, you guys, every single possible sample, it is sometimes possible if it's a smaller number, you guys might have to write down all the possible combinations, okay? Um, but in this one, you don't have to, right? But if we did every single one of those 20s and calculated the p hat, we would have what's called the sampling distribution, okay? So the definition of a sampling distribution that you should write in your notes, uh, the sampling distribution of a statistic is the distribution of values taken by the statistic in all possible samples of the same size from the same population. Every single possible way we could choose 20 chips from the bag of 200 okay, would give us a sampling distribution. sampling distribution. So we may not be able to get all 20 uh, different ways that we could choose 20 from 200, right? Um, so if we use uh, some software to simulate choosing 500 simple random samples. So 
instead of 36 of them or however many that class did, now we have software that can actually find 500 for us. So 500 different ways. We're taking a simple random sample size 20 from a bag of 200 chips where 100 are red and 100 are blue. Um, and we've got a dot plot from all 500 samples. So here's our picture. Okay, so instead of 35, now we did it 500 times. Pass the bag around 500 times. And then we have a whole bunch more dots. Okay. So let's answer some questions. There is one dot on the graph at 0.15. Explain what this value represents. So same thing as before, right? We've got this little dot right here that's 0.15, hard to see, right? Um, but Donovan, what does that mean when we're talking about drawing chips out of bags? Not sure, Ginger, what do you think? Yeah, someone got three chips out of 20, you guys, because I'm doubling it, right, so that we can make it out of 20. We're drawing out of a bag, we draw 20 of them, and three were red. That's kind of weird because we know that the true proportion is that half of them are red, all right? But that's what we're, that represents. One simple random sample of 20 chips, there were three of them. So this value is a C hat, okay? All right. Um, part B, describe the distribution. Are there any obvious outliers? So let's go ahead and describe the distribution. So of 500 of these. So we've got the shape. David, what do you think for the shape? David O. Okay. It is roughly symmetric or something. Good. Symmetric. Okay. Uh, we've got somewhat bell-shaped, right? Uh, and it's unimodal. Okay, there's our shape. Uh, let's talk about the center of our 500 samples. Uh, Chelsea, what do you think the center is? So it's 0.5. The more we take, the closer it is to 0.5, right? So last time, oh, uh, yeah, because we have 500, I would say no. Let's just put it, it's just going to be at 0.5. Okay, so our center is about 0.5. And our spread, so same thing, we could calculate it using the formula that we talked about, right? You could figure that out. Um, they also talk about range. Range is also spread. So our lowest value is 0.15. Is that 0.15, you guys? Yeah. And then it goes up to, what's this guy, point? 0.8-ish. So you can also talk about range when you're doing spread. So from 0.15 to 0.85. Um, outliers. There is a possible outlier. Um, 0.15 might be. Kind of stands out as being low. Okay. Okay, now this piece is really important. And you don't want to get confused on which is which kind of graph. So I would probably write down population distribution. This is a word that you want to understand. So population distribution, we're talking about one individual thing, meaning the whole population of the bag of chips, and half of them are blue and half of them are red. So we've got a bar graph going for that, okay? Basic bar graph. Now, every time we have a sample, so each kid pulled out 20, right? Every single one is going to look a little different. So this person got 8 out of 20 that were red, which means that 12 out of 20 were blue. So we've got a bar graph for that. So I would write this down. Distribution of the sample is another bar graph. Okay, so we're going to take a whole bunch of these little guys in order to make this. So this is called the approximate sampling distribution. This is the one we just did on the last page where we had the 500 simple random samples. Okay. It's approximate because we didn't find every single possible sample. Okay. To be a true sampling distribution, you would have to have all 1.6 times 10 to the whatever it was 
possible ways of choosing 20 chips out of 200, okay? So instead we do an approximate sampling distribution, which looks like that lovely dot plot. So these sound very similar, don't they? Distribution of sample data and sampling distribution. There is a difference and you have to know the difference. So the distribution of a sample data, this is like singular, this is one draw, right? And when we're talking about sampling distributions, it's a whole bunch of dots. It's all 500 that we took. So that's the difference. So the population distribution gives the values of the variable for all individuals in the population. Again, individuals, 100 red, 100 blue, that's the population distribution. Again, think bar graph, okay? The distribution of sample data shows the values of the variable color, in this case, for the individuals of the sample. So same thing, this is the bar graph, okay? Both of these are our little bar graph. Population represents the whole thing. Sample would be one sample. And then we already wrote the, the definition for the last one. So hopefully you guys have that in your head. Um, the population distribution, just a reminder, and the distribution of sample data describe individuals. A sampling distribution describes how a statistic varies in many samples from the actual population. So your dot plot that you're looking at, many of them. All right. Mars Incorporated says that the mix of colors in its M&M's milk chocolate candies is 24% blue, 20% orange, 16% green, 14% yellow, 13% red, and 13% brown. Assume that the company's claim is true. We want to examine the proportion of orange M&M's in repeated random samples of 50 candies. Graph the population distribution. Identify the individuals, the variable, and the parameter of interest. What kind of graph is this gonna be, you guys? Bar graph, okay, population distribution, bar graph. Uh, we've got each of them as a percent, right? Uh, individuals, what do you guys think the individuals are? The M&Ms, exactly. Okay, how about the variable? What are we talking about for the variable? Color, okay. The parameter of interest is what? Of interest, right here. Proportion of orange m and okay. So you guys would answer the question and make a lovely bar graph where on the bottom we have color and over here we've got percent and you make a bar graph, okay? That's called a population distribution. So we should kind of know how to do that. We're just assigning some terminology. All right, number two, imagine taking a simple random sample of 50 M&Ms. So there's like endless amount of M&Ms. We're talking about all of them that they produce, so a whole lot. We're taking a sample of 50. Uh, make a graph showing a possible distribution of the sample data. So you could multiply those percents by the 50, right, and get something close. It's not going to be perfect. It may not be exactly the right percentage, right? You can change yours, but you want to make a bar graph where it definitely adds to 50, right? Um, so in this case, they just made this up. They made it up that there are 11 oranges when they take 50, okay? So you're giving a possible sample. Just like when we drew the 20 chips, you could have maybe had seven that were red. You could have maybe had 11, right? So they're saying, okay, in my sample, there's 11 oranges. So P hat is 0.22. And they made a distribution of sample data. Again, what kind of graph is the distribution of sample data? Bar graph, so that's important. Okay, which of the graphs that follow could be the approximate sampling distribution of the statistic, okay? Different than the distribution of a sample. Now we have sampling distribution. So which graph can we immediately eliminate? Bar graph, okay? Bar graph would be the distribution of a sample, right? Sampling distribution has to be one of these lovely guys here. Which one is the true graph? You wanna look here, okay? What value is this? 
Very small. Someone in the front. <laughs> okay. Point two is in the middle. What's here? Point four. What again? What? Are, what's the parameter of interest again? We're trying to find how many orange M and M's. Well, if we look back at the very beginning here, what's the percent of orange that the company claims they have? Twenty percent orange. So which of these would be the correct sampling distribution? Yeah, the one that has the same thing. Okay, our sample, we're going to take many, many samples of 50, should still center around 0.2. Make sense? Should be the same as the true amount of the mean score. All right, so the middle graph is the approximate sampling distribution p hat because the center of the distribution should be approximately 0.2. The first graph shows the distribution of colors for one sample instead of a whole bunch of samples. And the third graph centered at 0.4, which is wrong. Okay? All right, any questions, you guys?